A lot of college students heading back to campus right now. If they're not there already, and of course, they're going to have to do things a little differently probably before they get there and even after they get there. So let's talk more about that as part of our Back to School series. Chris Marsicano is with us now. He's an assistant professor of educational studies at Davidson College in North Carolina. And our Arti Swaminathan, who covers education, is also with us. So, Chris, um, you know, there's this whole debate, of course, going on in corporate America about vaccine mandates, about whether to remask in the cases of people who have not masked up. Um, how is higher education approaching this whole debate? Well, first, thank you so much for, for having me on again uh, to Yahoo Finance. Uh, I'll, I'll start by saying about 25 percent of colleges, universities and community colleges are going to require the vaccine starting uh, this semester. We've got a small number of institutions like Davidson College, the University of Northern Colorado, the University of Richmond and Stony Brook, which are not requiring it yet, but plan to after a full FDA approval. And then about 53 percent of institutions are strongly encouraging or incentivizing students to get the vaccine. Chris, um, I'm curious because you've tracked all these changes over higher education, whether they're pivoting to remote last year with, at the heights of the coronavirus. Now we're seeing a couple of schools now doing the same with the, I think it was the University of Texas in San Antonio that announced yesterday that they're going to transition to remote for, I think it's about three weeks. So are we going to see this transition happen more as the Delta variant and the cases kind of increase? RJ, it's, it's, it's possible. Uh, UTSA is the first institution that we've seen, first major institution that we've seen announce that transition to online, at least for a period before starting classes fully in person is their intention. Um, so far, unlike last semester, unlike last year, the vast majority of institutions have stated publicly that they plan to be in person and that they plan to have some online courses, but by and large, they want to be back to their normal operations pre-COVID-19. That doesn't mean that institutions won't require masks indoors, certainly masks in classrooms, uh, th at least those institutions that are allowed to by state law and by state mandate. But we are going to continue tracking this. Uh, this time last year, uh, it, was, it was pretty clear that there were going to be multiple modes of instruction. As of right now, though, we're seeing mostly classes in person with some courses online for most institutions. And Chris, when it comes to some of the um, vaccination mandates, whether it's now or they're planning to do it when the FDA um, gives full approval, has there been any pushback on the part of either students or professors at these universities? Absolutely. Uh, it, in, interestingly enough, Indiana University mandated uh, vaccination and has been sued multiple times uh, to, right. to stop that mandate from taking place. Yet Indiana continues to win that suit. It seems pretty pretty clear at this point that institutions do have the power to go ahead and, and require that vaccine. Many of them are waiting for FDA approval just to be sure, but we expect that to happen for most institutions. Now, I will say, however, there are some pretty great incentives out, of the, out there for institutions that are not requiring the vaccine. Oklahoma Christian University is giving away tuition benefits and also an Xbox, two different Xboxes, and perhaps my favorite set of incentives East uh, Central College in Missouri is giving away passes to Six Flags, Cardinals tickets, Blues tickets, just to get students vaccinated. So even if institutions are not mandating vaccines, some are taking that carrot approach as opposed to the stick approach. Chris, just following up on that. So have we seen? Have you seen any more punishments or you know that kind of thing for students who refuse to get a vaccine? I mean, I saw that there was a school in West Virginia that's going to fine students one hundred and fifty dollars. Is this going to become more common? Have you seen many cases of that? We're beginning to see institutions really uh, pull out that stick since the carrot hasn't necessarily worked all the way. West Virginia West Wesleyan University is going to charge students $750 uh, if they do not get the vaccine. But there are institutions that have, like, for instance, Duke University has made it so that students cannot register for classes or live on campus without proof of vaccination. So the sticks are coming. We're beginning to see more and more cases where institutions are providing financial penalties in addition to incentives for those students to get vaccinated. Chris, just uh, want to follow up on, uh, do you think that institutions have enough to do weekly testing? I saw that Stanford now, on top of vaccine mandates, they're going to do a weekly testing. That's something that I think a lot of schools in big endowments can do. But do you think that other schools have resources to do this? 
Yeah, this is this is a great question. Stanford making big news yesterday, being the first of of many institutions, uh, the, the, what we expect to be many institutions, to go back to that weekly testing component um, uh, of all students, regardless of vaccination status. What we saw a lot last year uh, was that the institutions that had the highest quality testing approaches, those that had weekly PCR testing of every single uh, student on campus, um, they sort of planned for the fall to only do that for vaccinated for unvaccinated students, I should say. Uh, institutions are beginning to question that approach. I will mention it is extraordinarily expensive. I think I, I've said on this program earlier or on Yahoo Finance earlier uh, in the year that for a, an institution of 20,000 students, uh, PCR testing for every student every week of a semester would mean $30 million in investment in just testing every single uh, semester. And so that that's a big expense that most institutions can't necessarily uh, afford. Stanford, on the other hand, has a massive endowment. It should not be a surprise that it has decided to uh, invest in this testing. But looking at past semesters, last spring, only about 8% of institutions tested at what we would consider to be an adequate level of testing, testing every student once a week using high quality testing. And, you know, Chris, finally, before we let you go, just kind of zooming out away from the, the challenges of this school year, I'm curious just if you think that students who are matriculating now into to higher education are going to be turned off from pursuing careers in education as a result of kind of all these messes that have, have happened over the last couple of years. Um, you know, certainly someone who wants to be an educator is going to be driven for, for other reasons, but one wonders if on the margins this doesn't, you know, make someone say, eh, corporate life, maybe that's going to be fine because I don't know if I want to get mixed up in all this. That's a great question, Miles. I, I will say that corporations, more more than insti uh, institutions, higher ed institutions now have have jumped out in front of uh, mask mandates and have started announcing their va vaccine mandates as well. So I'm not exactly sure that the policies uh, for for the workplace will be all that different. Uh, but with respect to to enrollment concerns and and future faculty concerns, I'm actually more concerned about the K-12 level. We've seen a lot of teachers turnover in the past two years, and and students not necessarily deciding to go into K-12 education. So we're hopeful that once we get students back into uh, the, the the campus, um, once we get them back, especially onto campuses like your alma mater, UConn, that's going to be requiring uh, vaccinations, or Julie's alma mater, Randolph-Macon, that's going to be requiring <laughs> vaccinations. We want to make sure uh, that when those students come back, when they're vaccinated and safe, that they have an excellent experience, at least the experience that they hoped for watching movies all their all growing up about what college looks like. Chris, appreciate the research that you have done. Go Yellow Jackets. Chris Marsicano, Assistant Professor of Educational Studies at Davidson College and our RT Swaminathan. Thanks for being here, guys, uh, for this conversation.